Optimism's OP stack is going to completely change the landscape of Ethereum's layer two ecosystem. There are many different ways to scale Ethereum. Different teams are trying different strategies to produce their own layer two, each with different design elements and features. Optimism, of course, is one of them. Optimism is an EVM equivalent optimistic rollup, and it's just one flavor of a variety of possible layer two constructions. And there are other flavors too. ZK Sync's EVM compatible ZK rollup, StarkNet's ZK rollup, but with Stark OS instead of the EVM. Arbitrum's AnyTrust is an EVM optimistic rollup, but its data is held off chain. Many different design choices, each producing different chains with different properties, which are suited to different use cases. But the Optimism OP stack is something altogether new. It's one layer more meta. The OP stack is a scaffolding standard to modularize all elements of a layer two into standardized open source modules for layer two chains. And as a result of Optimism's OP stack, all the various different strategies that all these layer twos have taken can each be made into a module. And these modules can be slotted in and out of the OP stack as one builds a layer two. The OP stack is this build a layer two workshop and all layer twos are now capable of refining their stack into modules and making it available for a component for OP stack builders. The OP stack is like the ERC20 standard for building a layer two. And with the OP stack, it will be just as easy to start a layer two as it is to start an ERC20 token. And all the layer twos out there have already been working on optimizing their scaling strategies. And now with the OP stack, those optimizations can go into optimizing a module that can go into a layer two stack. And all the layer twos that are out there, each with their own design strategies, their own philosophies, their own features, can take the secret sauce of every single layer two and turn it into a module and make it available for anyone who wants to construct a layer two with the OP stack. We now have a build a layer two workshop that can help make any layer two come to life. And this is also why it's always been foolish to fade the layer two ecosystem. You can't outrace a Peloton. When all the layer two teams are all contributing their modules to a growing library of resources, keeping up with that progress, you just can't keep up with it. It's going too fast. The Peloton always wins. So let's dive into it. What are we going to learn in this video? We're gonna walk through what the OP stack actually is, how it's following in Ethereum's footsteps of scalability through modularity, and how other layer two teams can use the OP stack to build out their own layer two, or layer three, or layer four, or whatever chain you want. And how, if all of Ethereum's layers are built using the OP stack standard, we will see the rise of a super chain, one single chain for all of your crypto needs. No more bridging, no more network switching, just one single network. That's actually many networks, but since they're all built on the OP stack standard, they all begin to work seamlessly together and they'll produce the user experience that modern internet users demand. And that's really the big issue of how crypto has scaled so far. Both the industry at large and Ethereum specifically has scaled in a way that is unacceptable for modern day user experience. And that's the problem. Ethereum became congested and we came up with the solution. Solution, new chains, more chains, new layer ones, Solana, Avalanche, Phantom, Luna, but also new layer twos, Optimism, Arbitrum, Starknet, ZK Sync. The problem is that all of these solutions, all of these new chains are just a one-off solution. No common standard, no synchrony between designs, each one a monolithic chain with its own language, design structure, and asynchronous ecosystem. Since each one is a one-off solution, we had to make these cross-chain bridges in order to account for the differences of each chain. One-off solutions are bad, and it's perhaps the main source of all of these insecure bridge hacks that have plagued 2021 and 2022. If we want mainstream adoption, we can't have an ecosystem of many independent asynchronous one-off solutions. It's broken UX, and it's insecure, and it's also the current state of affairs. We can't bring this paradigm to mainstream. It's embarrassing. So let's put ourselves in the shoes of the non-crypto native and ask ourselves, what is it gonna to take to get them to use these crypto networks and start living a crypto enabled life? What kind of experience will users demand? Because if we're going to take the world of crypto to the mainstream, it's going to need to be built in a way that answers to the expectations of modern society. You know what modern society wants? Everything, all in one place, all at once, and really cheap. A single trusted seller of what we want and a seamless synchronous experience between chains. There's a reason why supermarkets exist. They save time, they're efficient, and people can outsource their trust to them. If it's a product in a supermarket that they like, they know it's a good product. And this is what the OP stack wants to create, a supermarket-like experience for the world of crypto. Everything all in one spot, good UX, competitive prices, time efficiency. So what is the OP stack's answer for how we get there? And how do we get our layer two ecosystem to look like a coordinated supermarket and not a disconnected flea market? The answer, I said it before, standardized open source libraries of code that produce 
shared security, composability between chains, and coordinated sequencing of transactions. All of these things are super important to create the experience of a seamless network of chains that all feels like the chains are in one single space. And all of these properties are working well together, you produce a certain user experience that is intuitive and meets the expectations of modern society has of the technology that they use. There are a lot of different aspects of Ethereum's layer two, layer three scaling strategy that go into creating a unified UX into a single seamless experience. For example, atomic transactions that execute two different transactions on two different chains at once. Something crucial for abstracting away all of these different networks. There's also this thing called global addressing where contracts can call other contracts by their addresses, allowing contract addresses to map each other and know that each other exists. And when you combine these two things together, you can start to abstract cross-chain contract calls, which is a huge step forward for blurring the lines between chains. Now, what do these properties unlock? First, no more network switching, so we don't have to like do that drop-down menu inside of MetaMask. Universal block explorers, rather than having one block explorer per network. And there are a ton of boxes that need to be checked in order to produce this magical UX experience. And there's no one single silver bullet for getting there. And that brings us back to standardized open source modules for layer two chains. Standardization is the key to going from disparate, disconnected, asynchronous networks of various layer twos to a seamless shared super chain network. And the OP stack is Optimism's framework for standardization for everyone. Okay, let's make this really, really concrete. What is the OP stack? It's a stack of technologies, of course. And if you're familiar with Ethereum's modular design structure, you're off to a great start. The first layer of the stack, the consensus layer, how the chain gets constructed. How does the chain come to consensus? The execution layer, the virtual machine, how the transactions get executed on that particular layer. And of course, the settlement layer, which is how layer two withdrawals occur to the parent chain, the L1, Ethereum. Ethereum is going through a transition from monolithic to modular, and its own layer two ecosystem is going to follow in its footsteps because it's been accepted that the path to achieving infinite scale without sacrificing decentralization or security is through modularity. Ethereum did it and layer twos are going to do it too. There's two different main modules that we have here. You have the rollups, which are the things that we know about, Optimism and Arbitrum's optimistic rollups, ZK Sync, Scrolls, Polygon ZK rollups. All of the data on a rollup goes on chain, on the Ethereum layer one, and that's what makes it a rollup. And that is one particular design construction, one particular module that can go to what a consensus layer is in a layer two. There's also Plasma, which is Kind of the same roll-up construction, but instead of having on-chain data, data that goes on the Ethereum layer one, you have off-chain data where you put the data somewhere else and you have what's called data availability challenges. This is a more trusted setup where the data that's being held about a particular chain is being held somewhere that's not Ethereum, but these data availability challenges help keep it secure. And it allows for more flexibility and more scale, but with less trust, you know, always, always trade-offs. And those are the main two modules that go in a consensus layer. The next layer in the OP stack is the execution layer. This is where the Ethereum virtual machine exists or move that new virtual machine that everyone's so hyped about. And what slots into the execution layer of a layer two can be generalized or it can be application specific. We'll talk about OP craft later and we'll use that as a case study for what you can really do when you have an expressive virtual machine to input into the execution layer of the OP stack. And then the last layer in the OP stack is the settlement layer, which just basically solves the question of how do you prove the withdrawal out of the layer two back to the layer one. Vault proofs for optimistic rollups, ZK proofs for ZK rollups, and each different team is coming up with their own different strategy. Optimism has the Canon fault proof, Arbitrum has their own fault proofs, ZK Sync has their own provers. Every single team is coming up with their own system to prove to Ethereum that they're secure. And this property is really important to taking Ethereum's layer two ecosystem to the next level. We need modularity so we can pop in and out of modules to improve our layer twos without rugging the remaining ingredients of what makes that layer two. So this is how something like optimism could go from an optimistic rollup to a ZK rollup just by swapping in a ZK module inside of their stack while keeping the rest of the chain completely intact. This also introduces the crucial, crucial paradigm of reusable code. Because if we create modules out of the different ingredients of our layer twos, that makes these modules usable by other teams to do similar things with their layer two by using the same code. Reusable code is how we fix exploits, bridge attacks, anything that has a bug in it. If we keep on reusing the same code, the ethos of open source makes that code better, more refined, more hardened, and more resistant to attack. This is why modularity is so key. Modules develop, they mature, they harden over time. And we need to make sure that we are reusing the same modules across the ecosystem to improve the code that our layer twos run on. Reusable code is crucial to producing a bug-free environment. There's no other way. So have no fear because the OP stack is here. Standardized, 
open source modules for layer two chains. And now that I've said that three times on this episode, we're gonna break that apart one by one. Standardized open source modules for layer two chains. Standardized just means that the community comes to consensus as to what a module should be. It defines the code for a specific module. We all agree on standards. We just agree that we make these modules in ways that are useful and implementable by all of us. Open source. All of these modules are free and available for everyone to use, everyone to iterate on, everyone to make requests, pull requests, merge requests, to make these modules better over time. The more people that are using these modules, the better they become faster. And of course, modules themselves. The last ingredient, actual little bits of data that you can plug into the OP stack to create a layer two. Makes them very easy to handle, very easy to reason about, and very easy to iterate on. You might be asking, okay, Optimism's bedrock. How is Optimism's bedrock fitting into this whole OP stack thing? Well, Optimism's bedrock is the first implementation of the OP stack. It is the first collection of modules that Optimism is using to produce Optimism bedrock. They're using the Ethereum virtual machine as their execution layer to make them EVM equivalent. They're using their own Canon fraud proofs to make transactions that are proven to the settlement layer. And they're a rollup, so all their data goes on chain. And that is the particular flavor of Optimism bedrock. Something new out of Optimism is OP Craft. And that is something that really flexes the power and modularity of the OP stack. OP Craft is Minecraft built on the Optimism stack, a fully on-chain virtual space where every single aspect of the world, every river, blade of grass, patch of snow, sitting on top of a mountain, exists on chain. And every single action in this world happens on Ethereum as a transaction. And OP Craft, of course, runs as an OP chain, meaning the blockchain is mainly being used towards updating the world as players modify it. Just like a normal rollup, developers can deploy smart contracts on this chain and anyone can run a node in order to access it. But OP Craft is an execution module that slots into the execution slot in a layer two rollup. And now we have a virtual machine that runs Minecraft, that's using its own blockchain with sufficient scale to not constrain its users. Why do we want Minecraft on the blockchain? Who the hell knows? The point is we can. And now that we have a modular execution layer to slot in different virtual machines, we can do whatever we want. We can have Minecraft on chain where the state of the Minecraft universe is trustless and accessible by everyone. And so we can all agree on what that state is. Perhaps something really important to unlocking some cool MMORPGs that we can't even imagine yet. And the point of this is to say that with this modular design structure for layer twos, with the OP stack, we can create much more expressive, much more precise layer twos to do things that we can't do with the monolithic layer two paradigm. Users demand a certain experience, and that experience is going to come from modularity and standardization of the modules. And once we have this, it is 10,000 times easier to produce a seamless blockchain experience where all these various disconnected chains actually can merge into a single unified super chain. And the aspect of this whole OP stack thing I really like the most is the biomimicry nature of it. What we're doing, what the OP stack is doing is it's deconstructing all of the different parts of a layer two that make it run. And each of these layer two teams, the ZK Syncs, ZK Prover, Polygons, Darknet, all these people, all these teams have secret sauce that make their chain super special. And what this modularity using an OP stack kind of construction does is allows these secret sauces to be packaged up into modules, into smaller different units. And so the secret sauce of one chain can be combined with the secret sauce of another chain. And all of a sudden we can have a new layer two that's taking the best of many worlds. The idea here is that we are taking all of the different components that make up a layer two and we are turning them into its own distinct unit kind of like a gene. And these genes, these new layer two genes can fight with each other on the open and free marketplace of Ethereum's layer two, layer three ecosystem. Richard Dawkins' book, The Selfish Gene, talks about how the smallest unit of life is actually a gene and different genes are competing with each other to self-replicate their own gene, their own DNA. And as a result of that, you have something like an animal, an organism, me, you. We are all a result of these different selfish genes that come to express humans or monkeys or animals or biodiverse organisms. And with the OP stack and the modularity going behind all the different components of a layer two, we can get that same sort of biomimicry in our layer two ecosystem. And we can start to construct chains that can do really, really cool things. And while they are all doing those cool things, they're all competing with each other to be more cooler than the other things. And so we are going from this monolithic layer two ecosystem to a modular layer two ecosystem where we can have 10,000 more chains that all compete with each other on the open marketplace to produce the best UX for their users. 
And since we have standardized open source modules for layer two chains, all of these things can exist under the same umbrella, under the same standards, in the same ecosystem. That is how we get Ethereum to all corners of the internet. And that is how we push the nature of crypto, private keys, smart contracts, transactions to the background because we can abstract everything away and just empower the users of the internet to be users. But now the internet is Web3. And that is why Optimism's OP stack has been living rent-free in my brain. There will be links in the show notes to more resources so you can keep going down the super chain Optimism OP stack rabbit hole. It's a really good one, so I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, you gotta like and subscribe. We put work into these things. I have a ton of fun researching them and I want to do more, but I'm only gonna do more if you guys are watching them on this new channel. So please like and subscribe to this channel. I hope it's been an educational video for you.